Um, and finally, the Prime Minister has taken aim squarely at Pauline Hanson. Driven apparently by recent polls showing strong and growing support for the independent member for Oxley and her One Nation party, John Howard last night used a major speech in Sydney to rebut her claims on Asian migration and Aboriginal living standards. But has the Prime Minister left it all a little late? Australian business people and politicians returning from Asia continually point to the damage the race debate is doing to Australia's name and potentially to its trade. And if coverage of the debate in one of Australia's nearest Asian neighbours is any guide, the damage may be beyond repair. Singapore correspondent Catherine McGrath. Singapore's most influential current affairs program goes on the attack. The Pauline Hansen saga continues. Last night, Talking Point focused on the growing influence of the member for Oxley. But while Hanson and her supporters may be dismissed as a silly, ignorant circus, the level of support she's gaining could be enough to give her One Nation Party the chance of an influential role in Parliament under the right circumstances. In a country that positively discourages criticism, especially of near neighbours, this is potent stuff. Asians have been keeping their distance. Recent reports said that Brisbane, in Hanson State, Queensland, has seen a drop... Up until the last six months, people-to-people -people ties between Singapore and Australia were stronger than virtually anywhere else in the world. Two-way tourism was booming, and Singapore was the second greatest foreign investor in Australia. Some of that is starting to change. And Singapore's media criticism doesn't end with the television program. An unprecedented editorial this week in the Straits Times newspaper said that Pauline Hanson was a threat and it said that Australians would have to decide whether to entrust their collective destinies to a party that lives in a world of racist make-believe. Australia has never had such bad publicity in Singapore and the race issue which business people and politicians thought would die away has only got more serious over time. And now with the formation of Pauline Hanson's One Nation Party, the concern about Australia in this part of the world is starting all over again. And on the streets, the normally reticent Singaporeans are speaking out. I think this issue of racism just uh, become more significant in the, in the last few months. I went to boarding school in Melbourne for four years. Um, I, think, I think it has damaged uh, Australia's reputation abroad but I think she says a lot of things that perhaps Australians feel but, but don't say because they think it's, it's politically incorrect. She should actually bear in mind that relationships are easy to broken but it's very difficult to mend. Yeah. Dr Bruce Gale is a political and business consultant in Singapore. Australian by birth, he's been living here for 20 years. The damage has already been done because people are now see Australia as being no longer really interested in Asia and perhaps even hostile, that, that there's a substantial section of the Australian electorate that uh, is hostile to Asians. At least certainly that's the image that's uh, presented in the Asian media. Last night's program on Singapore television emphasised that Australia is now starting to suffer as a result of the race debate. Tourist visa applications from Singapore have also dropped their rate of increase. And although Singaporeans continue to send their children to study in Australia, the rate of increase has also dropped from 10% to 1% in the latest tally. Singapore is a country that Australia can't afford to offend. Once an outpost of the British Empire, this tiny island with no natural resources is now one of the most dynamic economies in the world. Average wages here are as high as Australia's, and the economy is growing at a whopping 7%. What's more, with Australia trying to move closer to Asia, on a political level, Singapore is our strongest backer. But even Prime Minister Go Chok Tong, known for his careful choice of words, believes that the Pauline Hanson issue is damaging. People to people ties, I would think, in some quarters. It does make uh, Asians a little more wary of going to Australia. I think that's bad for Australia, and of course also bad for Asia. Craig Bell has been monitoring the continuing damage to Australia's reputation. We're constantly asked questions about Pauline Hanson and what do the average Australians think about it and do we agree with the policies and I mean not just here, I, I visit Malaysia and Indonesia from time to time and, and certainly in those countries too, they, the first question you get asked is Pauline Hanson, it's on everyone's lips up here. 
Could this be a turning point then in Australian interests in Asia? Yeah, really we are being asked a question now. Are Australians serious about being part of Asia and uh, doing business with Asia? For middle-class Singaporeans like Harpeet and Pavita Nahal, Australia seems so close, and so what happens there is important for them. Australia is a, is a, is a very attractive destination for yeah. Singaporeans. It's a, beautiful place. Um, it's a great place for investment, and certainly people are keen on knowing what sort of place it is, what sort of place it's turning into, uh, since they spent quite a bit of time there and uh, are putting in quite a bit of their money in Australia. In Singapore last night, viewers were left with one final message, that European Australians were invaders who wiped out Aboriginal culture. John Howard says that his recent visit to Singapore proves that ties have not been damaged over the race issue. But in a country where the media is completely controlled, it's now clear that the government of Singapore is trying to tell us something. And not them alone, I would think. Catherine McGrath with that report from Singapore.